maybe a first time second time third time whatever time mother but as long as you are pregnant you are a first time mommy and a first time daddy to that particular baby right and that is why you are here so you are welcome it's shikari your mama your labor and delivery companion your mother who nurtures you to motherhood and welcomes you and just wants to give you comfort and a good foundation throughout your motherhood journey today what's popping we are talking about random things and i think i have 10 random ideas of what i think that you should know before labor and delivery so number one have you settled on a hospital where are you giving birth where are you going to give birth so is it in a hospital setup is it in a maternity that is in a hospital all right is it at a bathing center or are you planning to have a home delivery we are in this century we are in this time where you can have your obscener you can have your midwife you can have your doula you can have your nurse coming to your home to give you a skilled delivery then you can do a, 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 a bathing center where the bathing centers are usually like amber care i will mention amber care because this is one that i know of where it's just a delivery point where there is a midwife there is a doula there is a knob scanner the team is there ready just to help you get a skill delivered at a place that is home away from home very homely very supportive systems and you are you are allowed to even bring your own blankets you are allowed to live um, labor in your own home clothes you know you are allowed to be you and feel you and bring along every other person that you want or are you going to the hospital and if you've chosen a hospital do you know of the hospital policies do you know the do's and don'ts all right so actually that's point number two whatever you are going to give birth at hospital home bath or a bathing center what are the policies what are the do's and don'ts so that you do not feel left out or you do not go there for example with a doula and then they are asking you no we only allow spouses to be around you you went with your mother you went with your big sister you went with some and they're like no we have restriction here we only allow one visitor at a time so what are, what are their hospital or maternity or delivery place what are their policies please get to familiarize with them so that you don't feel frustrated imagine you are in labor you are in this pain you feel like you're in distress and then some rules and regulations that you didn't know about are coming your way and that was probably what was giving you hope so know the policies number three about the same is what are the payment models are they accepting the insurance that you have for example in kenya i'll give an example of like random britain some hospitals have all all insurances apart from Britain and you have a Britain insurance and that's the hospital that you are going and then unfortunately you're there they are doing your admissions and they're like oh mama we do not accept Britain or we do not accept CIC we do not accept da -da -da -da. what happens does your insurance reimburse you may go to that hospital they accept it and da -da -da -da, you do then you pay cash and you write a letter to your insurance to reimburse you does it do that so think about that and when you are doing your hospital checks when you are walking around to settle at a certain hospital please try to find out if at all they do cash or they do the insurance policy that you have and how much it covers some they accept 75 cut off some 100 some 150 some 300 k what's your cut off get familiarize yourself with the hospital familiarize yourself with the uh, cash payment schemes so the next one you're going to talk about is still things that you should know before you deliver who will take you to the hospital i have seen 
mothers not even have seen that is me i drove myself to the hospital i drove myself from work with my second baby i was working and labor started and i knew that yes this is labor so i drove myself from work i came back to the house i had a shower went and saw my guy now because he's not based in the hospital that i had chosen and he examined me and wrote some notes and then i went to all that time i am driving myself with the loudest music ever and good affirmations and positive affirmations and i'm affirming to myself that i can do this and i'm talking to my baby that yes we can do this and we just hang in there you know peleka mami pole pole and yeah like it's because i was owning my bath so yes i've seen mothers who drive themselves it's not advisable but sometimes you can have the courage enough so is it your spouse who is driving you is it a cab is it an uber is it a neighbor who is taking you there and sometimes this labor we say does not read books it is not carved like this that all of us are having this no it's popcorn you know the way you you you're preparing popcorns and pop 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 pop, pop whatever comes first that is labor you'll have it very different even with all your pregnancies even with all your babies so this time you're able to drive yourself next time it comes and gets you off guard in a very panicky way you're not even able to dial any number you are panicky so what happens who is this who is just a dial away who will come to take you to the hospital mm -hmm. then another round of thoughts you've gone to the hospital and you have your other babies who will take care of them have you planned for them have you shopped are you leaving them in safe hands maybe you are a mother who has a toddler that's a baby who is below two years you have a five year old you're pregnant or whoever who is at home who is going to take care of your baby? Did you ask maybe your sister to come or do you have a new nanny? And that can be very stressful. Actually, we are going to do a separate video of how to prepare yourself, you and the nanny. But at the moment, who are you going to leave at home? Because we all are looking forward to have an amazing bathing experience. We are all like... Uh, Probably I just go home and the maximum if it goes to the CS to be three days. Then unfortunately a complication happens. Maybe the baby will be a little bit sick and may need to be admitted and stay longer in the hospital. Or maybe the baby is okay, but it's you. You as the mom who has experienced a complication and you have to stay longer in the hospital. Now this becomes more complicated. One who is going to take care of that baby, the newborn baby, when you are sick and you're being taken care of by the hospital. To some conditions, you are even helpless, absolutely helpless, and you're not even able to breastfeed, you're not able to hold your baby. Where will this baby go? Who will take care of this baby before you get better? And remember, you also have other kids at home and you had planned probably you're going back after three days maximum you're going back home so what happens here is it your husband is it your sister is it your sister-in-law is it your who 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 in that list is going to take care of you and your kids or your newborn baby i'm not scaring you i don't like the mood already but what we are talking about is reality don't you think so it's just reality and it, there are things that sometimes we don't prepare ourselves towards but they do happen don't they remember that story that you know of a friend of a friend of a friend or that happened that they needed an extra hand that is why i am here just to remind us that these things happen something else that you need to know before you go for delivery and this is very good when you discuss with your midwife or the antenatal care provider is family planning it's not early don't think it's very early it's the right time because some of the family planning methods that you may settle on are done immediately after delivery maybe you want your tubes to be tied 
it will be done immediately and this is a conversation you will have with your care provider that hey doc me now now uh these kids are enough for me i've discussed with my spouse i am we are safe we are fine i want a tubal ligation you know just tie the tubes immediately you see, so during labor and delivery you are there you are contracting you're like hey mama yangu sitafanya hivi tena hundi mtoto wa mwisho daktari ni kate haitakatwa haitakatwa there are no new tricks that are or, or vows and promises that are made by a mother during that time so it will be good if you have this discussion with your care providers when you're still pregnant and your doctor knows what to do the other one is uh IU, iud we call it what what do you normally call it a coil yes we call it a coil. <laughs> mostly we call it a coil huh? but it's an interuterine device that is put in your uterus so it's a very good thing if it's put immediately once you give birth then when your con your uterus is contracting and going back to its original shape and size it gets it there and then it just it's, it should just be absorbed in an easier way all right so if you plan early even your healthcare providers will not be caught up in an oops moment like i wish we prepared you early oh mami mbona ukutuambia you know so family planning so don't look at it like if like as if it's far-fetched if you want to do it or if you don't even know what to do start the conversation during antenatal and even before you'll have already been equipped by your healthcare workers and they will give you all information that you need to make a decision on the exact method that you want so if you have something that you want us to discuss and you want or to know the reason why it's advised or it is okay for it to be discussed or for you to know before labor and delivery please let me know so i think the last one i want to talk about last two i want to talk about is how are you going to cope with the pain with the anxiety and with the fear that comes during labor definitely i am a childbirth educator i am i offer these classes so i'll ask each and every mama who is expected get a bathing class it's very good to get a bathing class here you'll be equipped with how to cope with pain how to cope with panic how to cope with fear there are breathing techniques that you'll be taught they have we also have exercises that you'll be taught and we have other techniques like massage or touch of coping with labor fear and panic other mamas may opt to go for an epidural epidural is just an injection that is done at your back and lower back so that you it, it, you're able to numb the pain is able to, is numbed and this one is given by anesthetist or anesthesiologist and not all by the way some do some don't like giving and like in the, where i come from in kisumu we have counted number of them who would allow who would give it and i give an example allow me to give an example when i was pregnant nine years ago i wanted to have an epidural it's something that i wanted to, i was thinking of having it and I went to a few anesthetists and the one that everybody recommended that ah this one if you are actually giving birth at this particular hospital this one is the one who will give you <laughs> so when I went to him he discouraged me a big time he really did discourage me and I didn't go for it but now that I am where I am nine years later I don't even see the first why he discouraged me but I'm thankful to him because I owned my bathing process and I could feel each and everything that I wanted to feel at that time. Would I do this again? Let's not go there because that's I already have a last word. Uh, other ways of coping. Just know how to cope with the pain. Just know how to cope with the pain before you go for labor and delivery. Hey, can we talk about a monster called vaginal examination? 
Vaginal examination should be a topic on its own. However, I will mention it. Please get ready and know that they are going to have a vaginal examination done. And the vaginal examination, I hope I will not go to details. I just want you to know that they will do it. It's an examination done by your doctor or by your healthcare providers using their fingers. Unfortunately, we do not have an equipment, you know, like a stethoscope, like a thermometer, like a BP machine. It's just done by fingers and it's just two fingers. So don't get scared. It's not the whole hand. I've, I've had mothers say, no, 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 no. It's just two fingers. I promise you, I haven't done a video on vaginal examination and how you can do to cope with it. I'll do. I got you. Mama Toto will do it. But now, just to know that they will do it and the reasons why, it's a beautiful thing. It's it's something very good. It's something ideal to do. Is it necessary? It's very necessary. Why is it necessary? Because once they do the vaginal examination, they are going to have three results. They are going to know how your cervix is opening. You know, it's opening to allow your baby's head to come out. And then as your cervix open, it also thins. So they are going to tell how your cervix is thinning and if there's any intervention that you need to be done to help you. And the other one, we call it station. It's going to tell us, that you hear them saying, Oh, mtoto wako tu hapa ma, ndio hii kichwa ya mtoto hapa ma, ah, kichwa ya mtoto bado hiko huko juu. So, the vaginal examination, be ready, it will be done. It will be done. And it's a good thing, it's an encouraging thing, because it tells you how you are doing. Those are ten. I will talk about other random things, but just have those ten. If you want me to... To, to peel them, to synthesize them, to talk a topic at a time and how to get prepared about it, please let me know. I got you. Remember to subscribe. Remember to share with that preggy mama. You can barely die. You know, please share with that mama who is pregnant and expectant and let them know some of this random thing. Thank you so much. And I am here. I always got you.